Sports Mikey B in the morning time, yeah, off for work, we're technically going into the work, but I wanted to talk about something that was talked about yesterday, I wanted to give it a, a little bit of a frame of thought so we could discuss the Russell Westbrook going to D.C., and Mr. John Wall headed to the land of Houston, where the red bones live, let them live, baby, so John Wall heads over, Russell heads over, what are the repercussions, what are we seeing here? The tangible winners and losers of the trade. It's quite simple to me. In the east side, in the east side, where there's absolutely no, I don't want to say that, but the competition is low. I mean, Miami Heat made the championship last year. I mean, so at the end of the day, they're not a bad team. However, in years past, when there was the, some of the, the giant Miami Heat, LeBron James type teams, a little bit different story. And now... And now, Russell Westbrook goes to the land where he has the potential to have a, a no-problem win to becoming an all-star. That means there's no one in the lane that can stop him. He's also going to have the advantage of having the team really under his guidance with a, a shooting guard that doesn't necessarily need the ball to win. That means he's a spot-up shooter in Bradley Beal. He also gets a teammate, a potential another Euro superstar in Danny Avije. Only thing I worry about on this trade for Russell is the fact that he may stunt the growth of Danny Avije. I remember Russell on OKC, and he had some, some great talent. I'm talking about prospects that could have been all-stars. Terrence Ferguson, yeah, yeah, it's, it's off work, so I, I'll go deep. I know, I know the players. I'm like, oh, you know that? Yeah, I know that. Uh, Hamadou Diallo, a potential defensive stud, an athletic being, if he get a shot going, would be something special. He had a lot of talent. The talent could never play with him. The talent also never really gelled well with him, okay? So that's the problem. And when you got a young bud superstar or potential superstar in Danny Avije, who they say is the next coming of uh, not Luka Doncic style, but Luka Doncic potential impact light. Light, I said it, L-I-G-H-T, all right? You don't want to stunt that growth. And you know Russell. You know my man Russell, man. He likes the ball in his hands. Um, but he's become a better pastor, pastor as he, as he aged. My key proponent of this is how will he gel? How will he make Danny better? Let's get into the other guy that they got, Rui Hamachura, the power forward, okay? Rui is an amazing talent as well. They have the makings. Bertrands from three-point land, not a bad team. The way I see it, I think they, I think they bump out the Charlotte Hornets as the eighth seed with Russell Westbrook and Beal, I think that's enough with the players that they were able to accumulate and are still trying to accumulate. Now, who's the winner? Let's go into the West. Let's look at Houston. Let's look at what they built up. All being said, James Harden stated he wanted to come to the East. He wanted to come to the East, the B side, and be with Mr. Kevin Durant and Kyrie's Irvings. You know what I'm saying? So it was going to be the new trio. And I don't think there was enough balls to go around. And I think the Nets would have gutted their whole team. And they're going to be having an introspective of, oh, man, maybe we did too much. Because Carl, Carl LaVert and all those guys, Dinwiddie off the bench. Uh, Harden is great, but I don't know if he can make up all of those guys. See what I'm saying? So all of those guys, that's a, that's a tough animal to beat out. So that's my little bit of fear with Russell Westbrook was, I don't think he has the capacity to be all these guys in that in that time frame and and my other, excuse me in in that mindset of becoming a champion because that's a lot of load to overcome losing all those guys it was a, it was a big trade on me and I saw the players to make it line up it didn't make sense so now what does Houston get far as future even though they take on a John Wall contract where he's making I think 123 mil over two to three years. We also have an issue with the fact that the draft picks were sent over from the Washington Wizards. The Wizards are giving up some draft picks. I think this is an amazing opportunity for the Houston Rockets. This is what they get. 
a 2023 first round is is uh, first round lottery pick, protected pick from the Wizards. Okay, first round pick could be one through twelve, and then this is it. It says it it has a succession of protections that include a pick of one to twelve in 2024, one to ten in 2025, and one to eight in 2026. Okay comes a second round pick in 2026 2027 so it's protected but the next year's draft next year's draft okay and they don't and then they're not getting that next year's draft and that's my issue the building blocks that could be there for next year's draft are freaking nuts all right the talent that will be available for the 2021 or 2022 I can't even figure out the years. What year are we in? 2022 draft are freaking delicious. If the Rockets, who I think may allude to trading James Harden and then let the two-year contract run out with John Wall, they may have the potential on the James Harden trade to get a slew of draft picks and make it a quick, fun rebuild with the amount of talent that's available in the coming drafts. The other thing they could do is do just what I do. The other option is just sit pretty and wait for the draft picks to accumulate. That means keep hard in there, wait for his contract to run out, wait for John Wall's contract to run out. They got a year, I think a year or two with, with Cousins. They got Christian Wood, exciting talent. Let's see what they, these guys can do. You know, they get us to the playoffs. No, you're not winning the championship with that group, but unless there's injuries, but you are getting something that is at least watchable. So they could do that as well. In all, I think Houston has come up on top on this trade because Westbrook is on the wrong side of 30. And LeBron's proven you can keep it up as long as you keep that WD-40 in your legs. But there's only so much you can do. And these young guys, they get busy and they can come. I hate to make a reference, and I don't want to say this is a problem. Okay, I, I love this kid. It's, it's like Nate Robinson versus Jake Paul. Outside of the factor that Nate Robinson didn't use any true boxing stance, the other it factor that Nate doesn't Ro Robinson doesn't realize, he's 36 years old. And Jake Paul is 23. And no matter what hygienics, what you do, there are some physical specimens that are amazing. Even LeBron James has got slower. There's nothing you can do about age. It's there. It's with us. 